Are you excited? I mean, I'm excited. I got my physics box. This is a big day. I mean, this is like better than a birthday. Of course, at my age, almost every day is better than a birthday. But this box makes the Experimental Physics Research Academy an honest operation. Because normally you'd be at Penn and you'd be doing experiments. If you're remote, you kind of would have to watch us do experiments. But Peter and Mary worked really hard to put this box together. And it gives us a program that is, you know, going to be an experimental program. And, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm very grateful to them for the work they did. The centerpiece of this box is this IO Labs data collector. This is a really neat box. At Penn, we use the Vernier Logger Pro system, which you may be familiar with from your own schools. And it's got all sorts of data collectors and a separate box they plug into. Um, all of that is in this one box, which is a tremendously flexible device. So this will record motion, acceleration, sound, electricity, light, temperature. We can do practically all the physics we could do at Penn with this. The only drawback in our mind is that the software is as young as the device. It has not been developed as well as the Logger Pro software that comes with the rest of the Vernier stuff we use in our labs. We like that Logger Pro software a lot. It's intuitive and it's powerful. And if we could get the data from this box into the Logger Pro software, we would have a system that gives us almost all the power we would have in Penn's labs. Well, it turns out we can. Any decent spreadsheet can send and receive data in the form of a CSV file, which is a comma-separated variable file. And it turns out the IO lab can do it, as can Logger Pro. And so we're going to take a look at how to go about doing that. So I'm going to open up my IO lab software. And it tells me that I have already plugged in my dongle. Um, and it says that my remote is on. And so we've now got this guy's talking to the dongle, which is talking to the computer. In this device for acceleration is a three-axis accelerometer. Y is along the direction that it would move if you use the built-in wheels. X is the lateral, the cornering acceleration if you're using the wheels. And Z is the bump accelerations if you're using the wheels. So we'll tell it, we, and, and this is about the quickest and easiest sensor. We just want to collect data right now. So I'm going to say, give me acceleration data. It opens a graph. It lists all three accelerations, X, Y, and Z. And if I hit record, as I wiggle it around, it says all three accelerometers are experiencing some shaking and bouncing. And after I run out of time on the 22nd axis, it gives me a new axis. But then when I stop it, it stitches it all together, and I have my whole uh, operation. So that's really all I need to do with this right now. I've collected data. The question is, how do I transfer that? If you take a look down here in the lower left, there is a gear wheel that lets you change the axis settings. Um, but then there's a box with an arrow, and if you click it, you get a toolbar along the bottom edge of the graph. There's some smoothing and FFT options which you can read about. We want to export to CSV. So we click that. And we get this wonderful green box up here. So we click the export to CSV and we get a green box in the upper corner that says that the IO Labs software has created a file in my documents folder uh, in a folder labeled IO Lab work file. 
So it will be under I in my Documents folder. And it's going to be an export folder in that with acceleration data from this experiment. So there is now a CSV file. The next step is to open Logger Pro, which I have previously installed on my computer. When I open it, it's a blank form. It says no device connected because we don't have the Logger Pro hardware plugged in. But we can put data in manually, or we could export, or we could import a CSV file. And we do that by going to the toolbar when Logger Pro is open, and the first uh, thing on the toolbar after Logger Pro is File. I click that, get a drop-down menu, and go down to Import From, and then another drop-down menu, CSV. Um, go up a bit. So here's my Documents folder, and Lo and behold, alphabetically under I is the IO Lab work files. I open that and I have a bunch of stuff. It's a complicated file or folder. Um, I want the export, export folder and I open it and I have my acceleration data. And so I can open that data and I get a very unsatisfying graph. It's not clear what it is. But in order to understand it, what I'm going to do is expand the data table and take a look at what I got when I opened the CSV file created by the IO Labs data log. And they do a great job with this because they tell you everything. So that's a big help if you know what you're doing, but it's confusing if you don't. And so there's an index column that basically tells you how, which data points you have, frame, sample, all sorts of stuff. We care about time. And so, like Excel, we can click on the top boundary of a column and spread it out. And we can see that this time is increasing in tiny steps because we were collecting data 800 times a second. So these are one eight hundredths of a second. We then have six columns. We have a raw zero, a calibrated zero, raw one, calibrated one, raw two, calibrated two. So these are channels. Channel zero, channel one, channel two. The raw data is the output, the digital output from the accelerometer. It's not reading in any known units. These, this is simply proportional output. There's a bigger value if there's a bigger acceleration. It turns out that to get meters per second squared, we have to multiply that by a constant, which has been determined by the manufacturer. And that is done internally to create a calibrated column. And so channel 1 is the X accelerations, and the calibrated channel, or channel 0 is the X accelerations. And the calibrated zero is meters per second squared along the sideways axis, which they've labeled X. The y-axis, which we're kind of interested in because that's along the, the road, if we were running along the road, uh, is channel one. And the calibrated column would be what we care about. And Z would be how bumpy the trip is. So now that we know what we've got, Let's get rid of that and go back to the graph. And we notice that the graph is not listing what we want. You should always look at the labels of the vertical and horizontal axis. And if you're making the graph, you should always label them clearly so that somebody who cares about the graph can see what they're reading. So over here, Logger Pro has chosen to plot frame. But this is a very easy software package to use, and if I click on that name, I get a drop-down menu that includes all the data columns that we've collected. And I can choose any of them to graph. I don't have to choose frame. And so I would like to look at calibrated channel 1. And so there it is. And now the 
horizontal axis is not time units, it's index. So let's click on it, we get our drop down menu, and we can choose time. And the graph disappears. Now it disappears not because there's no data, it disappears because the unit dimensions of the axis are much different than the unit dimensions of the data. So I could experiment by clicking on the high number and throwing in a new high number and trial and error, I'd get there eventually, it would take time. Or I can go up to the toolbar to the big A, which stands for auto scale. And if I click that, the software package automatically matches the graph coordinates to the data dimensions. And here we are with a Logger Pro presentation of the data that we uh, collected with the IO labs.